Welcome back to the joy filled home. And we're talking about today, how you can have joy in your heart. Now remember how we do things inside mom master university is based upon the faith formula. So it's important that we know how to change ourselves before we can ever change our family or our home. So how to create the joy-filled family, it might just start with you in your heart. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's session. Welcome to Mom Mastery University, the education every mom should have had, but well, didn't. I'm Hannah Keeley, America's number one mom coach, and class is now in session. All right, we are back at it again with another coaching session inside the joy-filled home. Now, it's important to create a joy-filled home, right? Because a house is not a home without that joy, without the energy, without that beautiful thing you bring as a master mom. So how do we create that? We learned in part one how to go through all the zones in our home to create more joy throughout all the space. We also learned in part two how to have the family rules that allow for more joy in the family. And now what we're going to talk about in part three is joy in your heart. And of course, my cat had to join in on this one as well. So uh, if you're watching the video, you know what I'm talking about. If you're watching the audio, my cat just jumped up next to me and is trying to hog all the attention, of course. Now let's talk about joy in your heart. I remember one time um, when I was younger, I there were all these stickers, and maybe you know what I'm talking about, where it was like an acronym for joy, and it was J-O-Y, Jesus, others, you. And I remember seeing that and just assuming, well, that's just, you know, how you do things. You put, you know, you focus on Jesus first, and you focus on people after that, and then following that, okay, hop down, you can focus on yourself. Now, if you think about it, maybe that's not 100% accurate. Now, I'm not saying don't put Jesus first. Don't, definitely don't put me in that category. I did not say that. So maybe it's not about, um, it's not about not putting Jesus first, but maybe putting ourselves last is not really a recipe for joy. And I want you to think about, like, it's a cute acronym, J-O-Y, Jesus, Others, You. It's really cute. It makes for a good sticker, but I'm not sure if it makes for a good spiritual like a good theology, because what we're saying is I have to put myself last. So maybe it's it's not even a hierarchy at all, if you think about it. Yes, Jesus comes first, but, but put his word first, and then our lives and the joy in our lives happen as a result of that. But what does that mean? That's, you know, chasing after the kingdom, putting the kingdom first. All these things are added. However, if we think about, well, others have to always come before me, like that whole idea there is I'm last, but I don't think it really has to be a hierarchy because a lot of moms are already operating with such a belief that I come last. I call it totem pole syndrome. What happens is you're the last one on the totem pole at the very bottom and everything just gets centered on you and it starts to crush you. So this is something that I've seen in a lot of moms. It's a totem pole syndrome where, no, no, I put myself last. I don't, I'll pay for things last. Yes, let my children have French etiquette lessons every Friday. And, but you know, I'm not gonna get myself a pair of underwear that doesn't have holes in it, right? I can just deal with the same old raggedy underwear that I'm wearing every single day. I know this is exaggerated, but often a mom puts their children first and that's the way our brain thinks, right? It always puts our children first because it's survival of the children before us. However, when we're always going last, we're not allowing ourselves to experience joy, freedom, abundance, and this is often a recipe for bitterness. So I want you to think, what if this is the hierarchy? What if just joy is just how we live? What if we can always allow joy? So I have a few things in here and I actually have four different, basically like principles around joy that we can apply as master moms. Because remember, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And, and mom is the thermostat. So however 
However she is going will determine how the whole family is going. So let's talk about these four different principles of joy. And number one, joy is our power. Joy is our power. So think about it. It says here in Nehemiah 8.10, Do not be grieved or depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. So I want you to think about that. We always say, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We get that from this verse in Nehemiah. But I think we don't really understand the magnitude of that. Think about all the things you have to do as a mom. Think about not just like take caring of, taking care of yourself, taking care of your home, taking care of your family, all the other things that are added on there, how to take care of yourself as a, as a wife, as a woman, as a leader, as a community leader, as like all these roles we fill, all the things we want to do, all the things we want to accomplish in, accomplish in life, the people we want to reach, the purpose fulfilled, like all of these things. What do we need to do that? We need strength. What is one of the biggest complaints moms have? I'm so tired, right? Of course you're tired. Look at everything you're doing. Look at everything that falls on your back. Look at the responsibility that you hold. Yeah, you're the glue. You gotta keep everything together. So of course you're tired. So I want you to think about this, like how do we overcome fatigue with strength? How do we get strength? with our joy. So what if, okay, just, just play around with me here. <clears throat> what if allowing yourself to experience joy is one of the most strategic ways to make sure you show up for everything you have to do as a mom, as a woman, as a wife, as a career person, as a minister, whatever the, all the roles you fill. What if the necessary ingredient, the necessary leverage point to make sure you have enough strength to do all that is actually allowing more joy in your life. Joy is not a result of everything going right in our life. And so we have joy. Joy is the necessary state we inhabit to make sure the things are going right in our life. Joy is not optional joy is a necessity if you're going to have the strength to do everything you have to do as a mom so think about it joy is our power now you know what else number two joy is our prize think about it so yes it's a necessary element that we have to have in place that necessary state but also it's a prize that we get to experience as well so think about this hebrews 12 2 and i'm reading the classic amplified it says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy that was, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So how is Jesus able to do the seemingly impossible task, right? Of having to sacrifice his life for us. How is he able to do that? For the joy that was set before him. So I want you to think about this. There are so many things in our lives as moms that are just plain hard, right? Like the, like the hour we get up, the tasks we have to do to get the whole family ready for the day. Um, I'm not even adding on to that, like your career and, and, or maybe your homeschooling or all the things that we have to do, but we carry a lot of responsibility, right? How are we going to be able to do all that? Like, if we think about it, I remember I was talking with Blair the other day. I was like, how was I able to do so much for those seven little kids? Like when they were little and they're all homeschooling and all in different activities and like they got different science projects going on and I'm trying to build a ministry. And it's like, wow, right in the muck, right in the thick of it, right? How was I able to show up? It's exactly how I can show up today for everything I have to do. It is a pattern is joy is the prize for the joy that's set before me. So I think about what am I here to accomplish? What is the real purpose here? What am I, what am I doing? Like, Ash, what's really going on here? That's one of the key questions that we can ask ourselves as moms in any type of situation. 
whether things going good or bad or or whether we're having an emotional reaction to something going on in our family or somewhere in our life, we can say, what's really going on here? What's really important? What's really at stake? If we could just give ourselves a moment, just breathe, step away from the problem to look at the problem, we can say, what's really going on here? And for the joy that's set before us, we can endure that. We can say, okay, I got it. Is teaching me patience, is teaching me discipline, is teaching me humility. In all these areas, we can just simply say, what's really going on here? Okay, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm game. I, I'm. You sold me. I, I'm good. But we have to assess the joy that's set before us. If I am here, if I'm going through this to, to experience humility, and I know that, that God will exalt us when we are humbled in due time, I'm good for it. Am I here to learn like, like more patience? Okay. I know what that's going to look like and I'm here for it. So think about all of that. If joy becomes a prize, we can ask ourselves, what are we really here for? What's really going on? What's the real situation? What's really at stake? So just give yourself a moment. And I think that's going to yield to more joy because you know, you're in it to win it. Okay, this they, we're after the long game, right? We're not here for the short game. We're here for the long game. <clears throat> so joy is our power. Joy is our prize. But guess what? Number three, joy is also the process. Joy is the process. So I want to read you James 1, 2 through 4. And it says this, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort, or fall into various temptations. Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. There's that patience again. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people, me and you girl, people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, defects lacking in nothing. So think about it. One, um, common element that I see over and over in the lives of moms is often a, um, a sense of scarcity, operating with the belief of scarcity. There's not enough time. There's not enough money. There's not enough opportunity. There's not enough love, right? We have this idea of not enough. And um, it says right there, lacking in nothing. So if there's no lack in him, there's no scarcity in him. So we can move out of scare city and move back into that place where we're abiding with him. But how do we do it? We consider it all joy. That's what it says. Consider it wholly joyful. So what would it look like if we could in every trial and every hardship and every challenge, because if you're alive, if you're watching this or if you're listening to this and, and your heart is beating and your lungs are filling up with air, then you're gonna go through challenges. You're gonna go through times when it's like, wow, I don't wanna consider this joyful. This is tough, this is a challenging moment. So what do we need to do to consider it joyful? The answer is that last part, lacking in nothing. What if, I want you to think about the last time you were stressed out. What was that last situation that you felt tense? You felt anxious, maybe you felt worried. I want you to go back to that moment, okay? Do you have that moment? Are you doing this right now? Are you thinking about that moment? Last time you felt, maybe you expressed to your husband, oh, I'm so worried, uh, I'm, so, I'm so scared, I'm, I'm worried this is gonna happen, or, or I'm scared this is gonna happen, or, or oh, I'm so, I'm so anxious about this, or like, think about that. I want you to go to that last, time when you felt that way and I want you to reassess it through a new filter what if at that moment I already had everything I needed what if at that moment I had a full source like an inexhaustible source at the ready that I could just tap into would I still experience that stress would I still experience that anxiety or that worry if I had an inexhaustible source of whatever I felt I needed, if I knew I had an inexhaustible source, 
that I could, I could immediately get access to, would I still feel that stress? The answer is probably not. So what if now joy is just the process of living? It's just the, it's just how we are alive. We don't have to stress, stress, anxiety, overwhelm, confusion, all of it is optional. If you think about that, we are grafted in through Jesus to God, to an inexhaustible supply of heavenly riches. Whatever we need here in the physical realm, whether it's money, health, um, care, resources, whatever it looks like, if we're already grafted into the spiritual root source of everything that shows up as physical fruit in this realm, the physical realm, why do we hold anxiety? Why do we hold stress? And the clue to that is our mom brain. We do have a mom brain and it loves to stress out. It loves to be overly prepared. It loves to imagine every worst case scenario. It loves to like camp out in fear. It loves to set up residency in scare city. But if we understood, oh, it's just my mom brain, it doesn't have to be true. Then what if joy just becomes the process of how we live? What if it's really not as hard as we think it is, right? Joy, remember, joy is our power. It's our strength. It's our source. Joy is also the prize that, that lays at the, as the result. But joy is also the process of how to go from beginning to end. It's how to live. It's how to make decisions. What if you can make all your decisions based upon that you are radically loved by God? That you are completely cared for? that God is enough for you, that he's your source, that he's not letting go, he's not giving up, he's always gonna be enough for you. Could you then allow joy just to become a natural part of your state every single day? Because the truth is you get to choose. Just like stress is optional, joy is optional. You get to choose. So I want to encourage you to put more of your belief in the most favorable scenario. Because think about it, stress and anxiety is really putting your belief into the least favorable scenario, right? Worry that something could happen or this could be true or this is what could result. But what if you could take that same energy and you could put it toward the most favorable scenario? What does that look like? That looks like faith. And how does faith show up in your life? It shows up as joy. Count it all joy. No matter what you face, it's all joyful because it's all working for you. See, in the truth of, of life, things are not happening to you. Things are happening for you. And when you get that perspective right, then all things can be joyful. There's, there's joy hiding somewhere. Can you find it in everything? So that leads us to number four. And this is the last principle of joy. And joy is the pattern. So remind yourself, this has to be a conscious thing. The problem with mom brain is we do most of our decision-making unconsciously. It's like, I mean, because we have so many things going on, we have to make so many decisions. Decision fatigue is a real thing with moms. And that's why a lot of times we just kind of want to numb out with like television or phone scrolling or something because so much decision fatigue we've had to make so many decisions we kind of like used up all that cognitive juice in our brain so when you think about it sometimes joy doesn't feel accessible just because we don't feel like we have the mental energy to make that decision right but what if we could just turn it into a conscious thing mom the mom brain is predominantly on autopilot but it will help you to consciously take it off of auto autopilot to make a decision. I choose joy. So I want to read this to you. This is Philippians 4, and it's a little long, but I want you to bear with me because it, like, I didn't just want to pick it apart and take it out of context. I wanted you to see the whole truth of what I believe God wants you to know in listening to this today or, or watching this today. He wants you to know this and so I wanted to include everything 
says, I'm starting at verse four of Philippians four. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, gladden yourself in him. Again, I say, rejoice. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He's coming soon. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition and definite requests with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul, assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if, there, if there's any virtue and excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. I want you to say that out loud. Fix my mind on it. Say it one more time. Fix my mind on it. I want you to see this passage, and this is why I wanted to include the whole passage, is verses 4 through 8, is the very first, very first verse says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So how do we do it? We choose joy, and guess what? We do it again. And guess what? We do it again. And guess what? We do it again. That is the pattern. Joy is a pattern. We don't just, it's not just a one and done. We don't just say, oh, from now on, I'm going to be joyful. No, we're joyful at 1245 p.m. And guess what? We also have to make a decision around 117 to be joyful again. And guess what? We probably have to make that decision around 119 to be joyful again. And guess what? Around 220, we're going to make that decision again to be joyful. So it says right here, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So you rejoice. And, and again, remember, it's like he's repeating it here. Again, I say rejoice. Even the term rejoice we means again. So rejoice is just making it, fixing your mind on joy and then refixing your mind on joy and then refixing your mind on joy. So rejoice means to embrace joy again. Again, I say rejoice. Now again, pick up that joy, embrace it. Again, pick up that joy embrace it do it again and again and again and now what does that last verse say the very end of verse 8 says this fix your minds on them think on way take account of these things fix your minds on them how do you fix something you reset it right when we have to um fix something around the house we have to do something to restore it to how it was we had to fix something with our television the other day. Had to restore it to how it already was to get the programming right. I had, um, I'm always having to like, we had to like fix a, a wood patio that branches off our house. Yes, we have to fix those boards and restore it to how it was before. Fix an electrical outlet, rewire it how it was before so when we think about rejoice and fixing your mind it's a process and it's a pattern of going back embracing joy embracing joy embracing joy we set our mind we keep it set that's what colossians 3 2 says i want you to think about that colossians 3 2 says set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things not on the things that are on the earth set your mind keep it set rejoice again rejoice fix your mind. It's always tweaking it, always tweaking. We make a decision, we make it again and again and again and again. With a mom, our lives are so varied, so complicated, so many things going on. We have to be the captain of our thoughts and we fix our thoughts. And guess what? In 23 seconds, we might have to fix it again. We might have to fix it again. That's the beauty of being the master of your mind. You get to choose your thoughts. You get to choose your state. You get to choose what you embrace. And I want to wrap up with five joy reminders. And these are five things that I tell myself all the time that help me reset 
my mind on joy and pick it up and embrace it again. So I'm gonna give you these five joy reminders to help you set your mind and keep it set. Number one, it's all happening for me, not to me. Number two, even in this, I'm 100% okay. Number three, where is joy hiding right now? Number four, nothing is that big, it's just life. And number five, God, is there something I'm missing? Now, we're going to do work on those five joy reminders inside the extended edition. So make sure you get inside. It does not stop here. This is just a starting point. Make sure you get inside Mom Master University, do the extended work, and we're going to take those joy reminders. We're going to knock it home. So I'll see you inside Mom Master University. So what about you, Mama? Are you ready to enroll in the only school that will not only change your life, but also your legacy? Go to Mom Mastery University, where we dive deep into the biblical principles that give ordinary moms extraordinary results. Get enrolled today.